I think the best way to describe Oshkosh is to say that it is the mecca for aviation. And every year, more than 600,000 people and 10,000 airplanes make the pilgrimage so that we can all come together and celebrate. The thing that we love, aviation. that time of year already again so today we are flying to Oshkosh for EAA Air Venture 2023. Today's Sunday uh, we, had, we had another really early departure this morning we departed Lawrence Kansas at uh, 4 26 a.m. and uh, it's now about at 6 7 a.m. and we're about an hour and a half away from a very special fuel stop where we're going to be picking up a very special passenger who will be joining us for Oshkosh this year. So we'll be there in about an hour and a half and then we'll land, fuel up, and um, turn northbound. Yep. All right, guys, we just picked up passenger Princess Avery. <laughs> she was standing by the runway with her thumb out. Yeah, I thought she was a, a vagrant or homeless Luckily, person. I didn't know yeah. she was a princess. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we had an extra T-shirt for her. So, But anyways, we're on our way up to Oshkosh now. Uh, we're still climbing out, but it should be about an hour flight up there to whatever transition they're using at the time. We'll get the ATIS when we're, you know, 50 miles out or whatever, determine what we're going to do. But that's what we're doing next. Oshkosh, Whitman Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. 1404 Zulu. Wind to Niner. Zero at zero five. Visibility Niner. Sky condition clear. Temperature two zero Celsius, dew point one seven Celsius, altimeter two niner niner one. Remarks: Density altitude one thousand six hundred. Descent okay. checklist. Descent checklist. You want to read it to me? If you're already in seat belts. Avery, got your seat belt on. Strapped in. All right. Good. Fuel selector on low. Got it. Power set. Power set for now. Okay. Mixture is enriching. Yep. Good for now. Infirmary not needed yet. Uh, not needed yet. Avionics set. Uh, yes. If you don't have two miles, Landing trip, lights, taxi we'll lights on. Lights are all on. And pedo heat as required. Two miles, not required. Break you off and it keeps your all right, descent checklist complete. Quicker from going okay, so we are 16 miles from the Endeavor Bridge transition for the Fisk arrival into Oshkosh. And we're starting to pick up a lot of traffic on ADSB that we're going to have to blend in with at Endeavor. I see one guy over here at my 930. Further right, further right. And then we're going to fly inbound.
Go ahead and yep. start your turn. Nobody will cut us off. With you then. No, we need to we can slow it down. 5. Listen up on 18.5. They will call you, Flying Boat. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. Flying Boat switching 18.5 over railroad track. Stop talking. RV type half mile southwest of Fisk, gonna be a right turn runway 36 and stick up. Alright, looks good, Blake. For me, I think RV what we do is we follow that guy all the way to the runway. Right turn. You're gonna follow the east west road, Fisk Avenue. 1800 feet for me, keep that antenna off your right side, RV type. Yeah, your spacing is real good. Okay, I'm going on the two mile scale now. Attention all aircraft, Fisk uh, VFR approach control, Oshkosh is landing, runway 27 and 36. This is doing the uh, Endeavor transition right now. We need two miles in trail, single file. Everybody in line, unfortunately we got limited visibility, haze and some smoke in the area, so we got to have a little bit more than normal in trail. Get that's in what line, it is, is the uh, Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Follow them as best you can. But that two makes miles. it harder to see somebody. We We'd rather have it established out there than but See, evidently they're having here. trouble we seeing planes. That's the yeah. last thing we want to do. We want everybody on the ground and safe and have a great oh, show. Uh, <laughs> shaping up the We're looking good, day. Avery. Everybody has a safe if and you've got show. traffic Welcome on your... Gosh, we're doing the best we can. Just try Avery to just sitting back there. We're not exactly... She, she can't, can't say anything. Right? She oh. can't tell us whether we're doing good or not. She just... I think if she hits us over the head with that iPad, then we know something's up. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Be our indication. Okay, where's Fisk? High wing, half mile southwest of Fisk. It's going to be a right turn, runway 36 for me. Good rock. I like that nose. That nose light makes it easy to pick out. I wish everybody had some of those. Right turn for me, eastbound. Pick up that uh, east-west road for runway 36. Nose uh, light, and you can monitor tower on 26.6. That was you. Right. Well, there's plenty of parking at the south Sky 40, south so maybe the north. Search descent, runway 36 west, clear to land, yellow dot. Tail dragger south of the tower, search to descent, runway 36 left, Probably clear land. Yep. Full flaps and, uh, Hello, Don, needs you off the runway, turn left into the grass. Turn left into the grass, uh, it's been rolled smooth. Good job. Skyline just touched down, great job. Turn left into the grass, follow the flagman. Skyline, if you just get off as quickly as possible, we really need some help. Or get off as quickly as possible. Which direction? Left. Left, left, left. Left, left type. Left. All right, my sky, uh, sky Hawk on short final. Power all the way down, yellow dot. Power all the way down, yellow dot. Yellow dot. The tail dragger on the base just about to turn final. Yeah, runway that'll be good for us to go north. And, uh, yellow dot. That's a green dot. High wing just yeah, the, down. Let's keep flying all the way down to the yellow dot. That yellowish green dot they were talking about. Yeah. High wing south of the tower. Continue descent to uh, runway 36 left. Clear to land, yellow dot. Skyline, uh, just over the purple dot. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, all the keep way down up. past the yellow dot. Yeah. My skyline on the, the yellow dot. Skyline yep. on the left Got base, it. change to the skinny runway. Skinny runway, red square, cleared to land. Tail dragger behind him, behind the skyline on the base. You're going big runway, big runway, yellow dot. Yellow dot. Cessna just rolling out, turn left into the grass, follow the flag, and nice work. Good job. And the uh, Cessna short final for 3-6 left, all the way to the yellow dot. Keep it up in the air, all the way to the yellow dot. Skyline, just uh, looks like you just lined up for the 3-6 left. Uh, make sure you're on the right side, skinny wing. Go north. Go north. Yep, you can. All right, my, my high wing with the landing light in the nose. Skinny runway. Shut it down. Yeah. All right, guys, we made it to Oshkosh. We're here. Camp is being, is pretty much all set up. There's our tent and Avery's tent over here. So this will be our home for the next several days. All right, guys, we're heading to the uh, like show area now. Oshkosh doesn't officially begin until tomorrow, but there's still like airplanes and stuff to look at and we're all set up at camp now so that's what we're gonna do probably get some food too yeah there are so many vintage airplanes here so all this is runway 36 is right over there and so all of this area way down south probably a mile and a half or two miles is all camping vintage camping and then camping as you get further south and then obviously the area where we are there's camping all around runway 27. So there's just so many airplanes here. It is so awesome.
This is the first ever Cessna 172, which is the airplane that we fly. Obviously ours is a much later model, but this thing is pristine. All original. On the inside, he's got this beautiful Cessna 150 back here also. Here's all the Cessna 190 and 195s. These airplanes are so pretty. And they were very luxurious for their time. Great, great airplane, great looking airplane too. Um. All the way down the South 40. There's the South 40 where the turnaround is for the where the trams and the bus will come pick us up. But I know, but hopefully a tram will come. But uh yep, lots of vintage airplanes and now this is just vintage camping. Um not all these are show planes anymore, but the South 40 is huge. They added all that area. That's that's new since I was last year. And then um, way down south, the airplane still goes. So Oshkosh is huge. What's up, guys? We just had a Revere float. I want some shake. Revere float at a &W. Now, me. Yeah, it was pretty good. I think now we're going to go try to look at whatever warbirds are here so far. Like I said, there's not like a whole lot to do just because, oh my, my hat is sideways. Just because it's the day before the show, so we might do that and then head back towards the campsite. So they've got some Corsairs here now. Earlier they just had like three P51s, but they've got several P51 Mustangs over there. And some more Corsairs, more Mustangs. So they're coming in. I even see a P40 over there. So they're getting here. They've got some more Warbirds in, there's all the T6s down there. The Avenger here, Bearcat, I think there was a Hellcat on the other side. Trojans over there. And then L39s, jets and such down there, MiGs. Pretty cool. There's some bombers over there too. A couple B25s, SBD Dauntless. So cool. It's gonna be even better tomorrow. We're just chilling out at base camp now listening the airplanes we're surrounded by airplanes at this point and there's a bunch of f-22s out there Whoop. doing uh flybys let's see if we can get one right there Whoop. so that's pretty cool so yeah we're just hanging out and then we're gonna go get dinner soon right avery right sounds good we just went to dinner at a pizza place. What was it called? West, West End pizza. pizza. Okay. We got a barbecue chicken pizza. And now we're going to go see Top Gun Maverick with Olivia. It yep. Olivia. Very, very exciting. Actually opening day of Oshkosh, so there's gonna be a lot to do today. Um, we just got up, brushed our teeth, got ready, and stuff. We're probably gonna go get some breakfast soon. And see what we can do. All right, we're headed down to Show Center now. We're gonna walk up and down the main strip. Just look at all the main big exhibitors. Probably go look at the uh, the Guppy and the Dreamlifter because Avery wants to see them. Just yeah, I think we might go we'll try to meet Stevie Treisenberg too. So that's the plan. There's Flight Chops RV-14. We might go take a look at that later, but for now, we're going to Garmin. All right, here is Skyhawk 809901 from Aviation 101, the one and only. And here's his beautiful Garmin panel with the dual G3Xs, the G5, 
and the 750 and the whole Garmin stack. So this is my airplane, but a year newer with a much nicer panel, I would say. Josh was actually just here, but I don't know where he went. We'll probably meet him tomorrow. Okay, here's Stevie's new to her Cessna 140A. It's a beautiful airplane because she did, she had it repainted and obviously the new Garmin panel and the interior and everything. So it's just beautiful. She's got this now in addition to her Bonanza, which obviously this was here last year with that new Garmin panel. And she just has two pretty cool airplanes, I would say. Wouldn't you say so? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we got to meet Stevie and we got to meet Jason Shepard from M0A. Both super nice. It was great to talk to them. Now we are walking around Show Center. There's the Guppy. We're gonna take a look at all the airplanes that they have. Okay, this is a F-15C model. This airplane is actually really cool because it has a confirmed air-to-air uh, -air kill from 1991, shot down a helicopter. This is probably one of the more outdated fighters by now. I mean, it's the same fourth gen like the F-16. Um, but I mean, in its time, it was just such an amazing airplane. It still is, but definitely, you know, not keeping up quite with the technology of today, especially the C model, but still really cool to have it here. Such a cool airplane. Okay, so this is a uh, Beechcraft T6 Texan that the U.S. Air Force uses to train their pilots. And from what I understand, this is what they initially start them in. And then from this, they'll either graduate to the T1, which is basically a beach jet, or the T38. And depending on uh, which one they go to, if you fly the T38, you're going to end up fighting flying fighters. If you end up flying the T1, you'll end up flying heavies. As far as I know, that's how it works. This is the V-22 Osprey, which is a very unique aircraft because these rotors can rotate 90 degrees so it can fly either like an airplane or they can rotate back and it can fly like a helicopter. So it's very unique.
this airplane, if you recognize VF-32 from the movie Devotion, this airplane was part of that squadron in the actual war. So this airplane was flown alongside uh, Jesse Brown and Lieutenant Hudner. Very, very cool. Alright, we're sitting under a T6 here in the shade. This feels good. We're about to go to Lake Winnebago to go look at the seaplane base. Just enjoying the air show right now. Yeah, we pretty much covered Boeing Plaza, so it's been a good day. I'm tired though. Alright, we just made it to the Oshkosh seaplane base. And all the planes are parked out there, and this one's getting fuel. It's pretty cool. This is your first time seeing seaplanes in the water, right? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's really cool. It's kind of peaceful here, shaded. It's a nice little getaway from the rest of the show. I just got, I have this new hat that grandpa gave me. It's a Cessna hat, pretty nice. We're just sitting at the seaplane base. Unfortunately, there's not any activity going on other than the seaplanes are just floating in the water over there. There's not much going on because the air show is happening over at the main airport. So the seaplanes can't fly because of the TFR. So not much going on, but we can hear all the jets and stuff in the air show, but we're just chilling here, waiting for our friend. He's doing an, uh, an interview. And then I think we're gonna go get dinner and then we're gonna head back to the main airport. Guys, we just got back to the airport. We had that, that amazing seafood dinner. Yes. And we're just walking through some of the exhibitors here. We were checking out the Cessna Denali and it was so funny because the Pilatus guys came over to it. It was like a straight beeline like swarm <laughs> they all swarmed the denali and they're like imitation's the best form of flattery <laughs> <laughs> they started making fun of it oh the competition is hilarious but it does look just like a pc12 so it's funny now we're going to we're either going to get ice cream and then go to the twilight flight fest or just go to the twilight flight fest because i don't know if a and is open still but we'll find out all right we got our a and w root beer floats delicious <laughs> next we're gonna go to the twilight flight fest guys this airplane is gonna be in the uh twilight flight fest in the stole competition it is so awesome they have it out displayed here near the um ultralight area very basic stuff in there gotta keep it light Steve Henry now, base to final, to your right. This is a just aircraft Highlander, one of the staples in the back of the A very capable aircraft.
on our way back from camp, or we're on our way back to camp from the Twilight Flight Fest. That was a lot of fun. What'd you think? It was really cool. Well, I already said it, but I like the helicopter a lot. <laughs> yeah, the helicopter is crazy. To me, it just, it defies physics. The RC helicopter, I don't understand it, but it was really cool, really fun. We're heading back to camp. And that is the first day of the show complete. Tomorrow will be Tuesday and we'll do even more stuff. All right, today is day two of Air Venture. It's day three of our trip. We're going to Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast and we're walking there right now. And then we're gonna get on with our day. All right, we finished breakfast at Dunkin' Donuts. It was good. I think now we're gonna walk some of the main exhibitors. Um, you know, Vans Aircraft, some of the aircraft exhibitors and show center and see what they have. All right, guys, check out the new RV, this new RV-10. Not that it's new, but Avery and I are sitting in it. So nice. It's so nice how spread out it is, isn't it? It's such a comfortable cruising airplane. My grandpa built one of these. He also built an RV-7. So super nice, super, super nice, super nice panel too. The Garmin, Garmin stuff. Here's the new RV-15 Bush stole plane that Vans is building now. This is their test aircraft. You see they got some strings on there. Pretty cool, but a lot different than any of their other planes. Okay, we just met Josh and Chelsea and Chris Palmer. Josh and Chelsea from Aviation 101 and then Chris Palmer from Angle of Attack. Now we're going down show center. We're gonna look at all the big aircraft companies and see what they have. They should have some really nice new airplanes. What do you think of the SR-22T? It's a lot, <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, there's a lot going on in here. It's definitely different with the throttle being down here and the side stick, but it, it really does feel cool when you're sitting in it. It almost feels like you're wearing the airplane. Um, but yeah, it's a, they're unique airplanes. Okay, this is the new Piper M350. It's essentially just the Malibu Mirage. My grandpa and I do lots of flight instructing in these, both initial and recurrent training. And we've been doing it for 34 years with aircraft, aircraft training services. Well, I, Malibu. I would say you've been doing it for 34 years. Okay. Well, I've been doing it for two years now. I'm not quite that old yet. Come and, come and see us. And right here is the new Piper M600. SLS with a halo package. So this has the Garmin Autoland system. This airplane is quite advanced from the old Meridian or the M500. It's definitely a step up. All right, guys, we are in the Piper Seminole, as you can see. We got two engines, Garmin G1000. This is such a nice airplane. It's definitely interesting to me because, um, you know, a Seminole is potentially something that, that I could look into for doing a uh, multi-training in. So this is pretty cool. What do you think, Avery? It is pretty cool. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of airplane. There's definitely remnants in here that remind me of uh, the Malibu, which I think is really cool. I mean, same yoke, same types of switches. So it's a neat airplane. Here's the Cessna Denali, or I'm sorry, the Beechcraft Denali. Very strikingly similar to the PC-12. It looks very similar, but it's a different airplane. And here's the Denali's direct competitor, the Pilatus PC-12. And this is the new one, the PC-12 NGX. There's some specs on it.
All right, guys, we are at the afternoon air show now, and we're gonna check out all the amazing acts that they have going on. And uh, let's see what they have. This should be pretty cool. Guys, we finished at the air show. We're back here at Show Center checking out this A10 Thunderbolt, the Warthog. It's an absolute beast. to go to Applebee's. We're very hungry and thirsty. Yeah. And Avery's quite hot. Yeah. All right, guys, we just finished dinner at Applebee's. It was good, right, Avery? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. And it was a pretty, pretty good day, I'd have to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, so we're walking back now. It's basically almost time to get ready for bed, so probably gonna call it a day. This was day two of Air Venture, day three of our trip. So we've got one more full day and then it'll be time to go home. All right, good morning. Today is uh, day three of Oshkosh. As you can see, it's an absolutely beautiful day out. There's rain and lightning and thunder. Oh, so we're gonna go seek some shelter and wait this thing out, I guess, and we'll see what happens. What's going on? Exploit is no out to apparently. 
Wow, you had to share that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're in the Hampton having breakfast. We're gonna wait this thing out. Look, look how dark it is. Yeah, it's so dark outside. If we made this pristine waffle, and we have orange juice. This is not bad. All right, guys, we're back at camp. Our tent is pretty dry. Avery's is mostly dry. Oh, she went in it. But, um, yeah, we're gonna maybe get ready and get on with our day if we can. All right, guys, the weather is past. It stopped raining. It's over there now to the east. And we are now heading into the show. Today we need to do Warbirds. Maybe, uh, well, we're gonna meet up with some friends. We might have to do Vintage when we do that. Probably go to the museum. Um, is there one more thing? I feel like it. I don't know, I feel like there is. But it's kind of the plan. Tonight is the night air show, so very much looking forward to that. Uh, 
Lawrence, Kansas, my first time at Oshkosh, and all I can say is really, wow, this is quite an experience. So I can tell you a little bit about this one. This is a Nanchang CJ6. It's a 1972. Nanchang CJs were built from 1959 to 2009. They came stock with the 285 horsepower Chinese Husei engine. This one had been modified with an M14P engine, which is a Russian in radial engine, nine cylinder, that is also used in the Yak 52s. The difference between a Yak 52, if you look at the wings, in a CJ you'll see it's got a dihydral bend, whereas the Yak 52 has a straight wing. The fuel is a little bit shorter, uh, less in the Yaks, they hold about 36 gallons. Uh, the story goes the Russians, the Soviets, were afraid of defectors, so they limited their gas. Uh, the CJs come with 40 gallons, it's gravity feed. It feeds into a header tank, so you get 20 gallons per side. Some people have modified the aircraft and added extra fuel. The other interesting difference between the Chinese and Russian aircraft versus U.S. aircraft, there's no hydraulic systems in these aircraft. They're all run by neutralics. So roughly a max pressure about 735 PSI. So that raises your gear, lowers your gear, your flaps, starts your engines, and works your brakes. Another interesting thing on the brakes, on normal US aircraft, they're tow brakes. These are hand brakes with a bicycle. So once you move your rudders more than 16 degrees, it differentiates the braking between left and right mains. Another interesting thing on the, um, the nine cylinder radial engines is they rotate counterclockwise to a U.S. engine. And then with a the radial, like all radials, you need to pull the blades through to make sure you clear the uh, oil. Oil might be in the lower cylinders, otherwise you can have a hydraulic destroy your, your airplane. CJ6s are known for gentleman aer aerobatics. Uh, they can pull up the 9Gs and minus 6. Um, they're a great all-round aircraft for formation flying, for aerobatics, for going cross-country. It's a nice, smooth ride. Um, very modifiable. They're considered experimental warbird aircraft. So as an owner, I really enjoy the ability to work on my own aircraft. So this aircraft started out as Chinese, a military trainer, about 2,500 hours. The Chinese pushed him in a corner and said, we're done. Somebody went to China and, and found them in the Russian Yaks and said, hey, these are still great usable aircraft. Let's bring them back to the United States, put them together and use them for civilian aviation. So that's how this began. Um, this one was imported in the States around 95. Uh, it's been around quite a while. Uh, it was down in Florida where I bought it about five years ago and brought it up. So one of the neat things is a lot of Chinese instrumentation, some Russian and some uh, US. And so as I modified it and it parts become, in some cases, harder to find, then I find a US equivalent part and install it. The interesting thing with the Serenity nose art from the uh, science fiction show was the cross between English and Chinese, and that was part of the, the rationale of naming the aircraft Serenity. Uh, this aircraft also used to have the uh, People's Liberation Army Air Force uh, stars and bars, and since I do a lot of the uh, military veterans flyovers and events, I put the uh, U.S. emblems on. We just finished with the Warbirds, oh, yeah, taking a little break, having yeah, some relics, the and then we're going to head over they're, to the museum. All right, we finished at the museum. Now we're getting lunch at Chick-fil-A, right, Avery? Hopefully it's good. Here they have Chick-fil-A here at Oshkosh. It's a little bit pricey. It's actually quite pricey. Yeah. Air show stuff. Okay, guys, we finished lunch at Chick-fil-A. Now we're checking out some of the career, tenors, uh, career center tents. 
And then we're gonna go down to Vintage and meet up with some friends soon. And then tonight is the night air show. All right, guys, we are now here with my friends, Drew and Lainey from Fly Me to the Fun in their beautiful Cessna 150. And I think what a lot of people don't know, especially their viewers, is that this airplane actually used to belong to me and my grandfather. And I actually learned how to fly in it. We found this airplane, let's see, it would have been a May 2018 when I started getting interested in learning how to fly. And what you would say well, was a barn find? I was, I was done flying. I had sold my last plane done flying and then this kid comes along and <laughs> all he wants to do is airplanes, airplanes, airplanes. So I decided, well, okay, I can find a little 150. I was looking in a four state region for 150. And I, I uh, had two of them states away and I was all packed ready to head out a friend of mine called and said mom we just found a 150 in a barn that's going to be off in a farmer field that's going to be auctioned off in a farm auction Sunday this was Friday you need to look at this I said no I'm headed out on Sunday I want to be in Michigan no you need to look at this and I thought it's only 20 25 miles from my house why would I not go look at it yeah. and sure enough we found this plane it hadn't flown for eight years it was covered with dust, it was a passport. It's the same model, same year that I got my commercial in CFI in back in 1669. And I said, okay, we gotta have this airplane. And so we bought it and I remember going home that evening and I called Blake, I said, Blake, we bought a 150. Oh, what? He was I was so pretty excited. excited. Yeah, he was I would say. 15 year old kid, he was so excited. And we went out the next week and our next, uh, yeah, we went yeah, out the next week. Later or yeah, we had to annual it, get it in annual and blew it. And no done. intercom, no radio, no nothing. We just were yelling back to the line before he was a happy camper. <laughs> and so, funny. finish the story. Yeah, so from there, basically, we started doing uh, like renovations with, you know, we redid the cowling and the wheel fairings and everything, the panel and the airplane. And you were doing all that during the week and then you would have the airplane back together so we could do a flight lesson every Sunday morning. Yeah, including the radio changes. Yeah. I just it was like ripping it apart. apart. Yeah. <laughs> so we were doing that for uh, about a year. I went through my solo and a lot of my private pilot cross country requirements in this airplane. And then we sold it to upgrade to the 172. But then what, a little bit less than a year later, the previous owner decided to sell it and you were the lucky buyer right and yeah. these guys are the guys that made it so nice and shiny. yeah we we take I no tried. credit <laughs> i made an attempt at it but we don't take guys. credit for the polished aluminum yeah. it is not a small amount of work <laughs> we give you all the credit for everything else they're always so, like did you restore this we're like no yeah. not at all so no. tell us a little bit about what you guys have done so we bought it in uh, on september 4th of 2020 so it's a pandemic purchase and uh we basically went out, flew it uh, up to Kansas first to visit your family, mm -hmm. and then brought it all the way home. And started just going on trips from Atlanta, like kind of short hops. And Lainey was bored and she was like, I'm gonna, I want something to do while we're flying, so I'm gonna start recording videos of our trips. So she starts recording and uh, posting them and they started doing well, they started kind of taking off. So we gave it a little more attention and started kind of you know, giving it a real effort and the channel just kind of, kind of blew up. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you've overhauled the engine since then, besides polishing it. Yeah, besides I mean, polishing it. You, you guys fixed up as much as we did. So, between the, two of us, is, between the two of us, this is a 68 150 that's as good as any new airplane out there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. When you first got it, we had the new toy syndrome and you put the rosin visors in. Oh, yeah. That's true. Um, and then you redid, you put is it, the beacon at the bottom and overhauled the engine. I want to hear how you two got together. How? how. <laughs> yeah, you have to tell that story. Was it, was it, New, it was Year's? New Year's Eve? It was New Year's Eve. We were, it was New Year's Eve of 2020, so we were sitting in our living room eating Popeyes. And <laughs> <laughs> that was our gay present. Yeah. Uh, and I was looking at DMs, and Blake reached out and goes, that's my plane and I was like he goes he told the whole story and I was like wait what and sent pictures of it like ripped yeah. apart started sending all the before pictures we were just like our minds were absolutely blown just like, like the, the world couch. just became so well, small I need to kind of tell it from my half too because I'll never I was in my dad's living room just scrolling on Instagram reels and I get of course a lot of airplanes in my feed and I see the start of the reel was you guys pulling it out of the hangar with the tow bar and I noticed 
noticed you had foam on the toolbar, and yeah. I was like, oh, that's a great, these guys are smart, that's what we did to protect our, <laughs> our wheel fairing. It's, it's your toe bar. <laughs> and then I realized that it's blue and blue, and then I'm watching this video, I'm like, wow, this looks a lot like our old 150, and then it cut to a shot in the cockpit, and I jumped out of my chair, and I was like, <laughs> Oh, that blew my that mind. I immediately DM'd you. He told me, he says, I can't help playing. I can't help playing. Yeah, he was texting me, saying that he was texting you. He was like, yeah. I'm going to get more pictures from my grandpa. Yeah, I was so excited. And you guys, I can tell you guys were excited too. And, it was uh, super fun. And then they're from Kansas, and my family's from Kansas. So when we flew in for Christmas that year, Lake was like, I'm going to come hang out. I'm yeah, like, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, so I flew the 172 down to. Hutchinson and then Drew and I. Drew let you fly. He let me fly him back. It was very nostalgic. And, <laughs> Drew was yeah. like, he's a great pilot. <laughs> yeah, he could prove the photos that he's flown in before. Yeah. You flew yeah. it into Oshkosh, right? Yeah, so we flew it in in 2018. Um, and then I don't know if it made it back until 2021. That's when you guys, I think that's when we met first was 2021 because I don't think Laney was there. I was yeah. not there. But yeah. we met that's first right. at, Hu at Hutchinson. And then, yeah, yeah. So that's the first time we met. And And what do you guys do with it now? I mean, now we just take it on flying adventures. So we went most recently in January, we went all the way down to St. Bart's. So that was uh, 16 days, 43 flight hours round trip, seven countries, 11 airports, I think. Um, ah. It was awesome. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. this is I'll insert this picture the plane plane in the video. Here. That's me oh, landing yeah. the airplane at Oshkosh. See, it's pretty shiny then. It was very, okay, so when we Googled That's the plane awesome. originally, you know, just, I Google everything. Um, we saw that picture and we sent that picture to people saying like this is the plane we're going to get so that's, all of our friends I actually, remember you, you I remember you yeah. sending me yeah. that and you're like it was just that's you that's you <laughs> flying the plane I know so cool. it's crazy yeah it's super crazy so fly me to the fun but chances are if you're watching my videos you already know who these guys are <laughs> but go follow them they go on all sorts of exciting adventures <laughs> anyways fly me to the fun thank you guys so much of course. thank you for keeping the airplane active and in such yeah, great shape this airplane obviously will always have a special place in my heart, so. Well, thanks for fixing it for us. Yeah, it's great to have it in such good hands. We appreciate it. Guys, we are on our way back from the South 40. That was so much fun with Drew and Laney. That was your first time, like, getting to talk to them much. Yeah, they're super nice. Yeah, so that was really fun. That went well. And we were able to get some rides back from the South 40, which is good because it's so far. They're parked on the other end of the airport from us, so. Yeah, and it's really hot, but we're headed back to the airplane, and then I think from there we're going to go get dinner, and then get ready for the night air show tonight. You can. Super exciting.
Okay, that is the end of our last day at Oshkosh 2023. We just watched the night air show and it was absolutely amazing. The fireworks show, all the airplanes, the pyrotechnics, everything was amazing. So we're heading back to the tent and we're gonna leave tomorrow morning. This is here another run, one way two seven clear for takeoff. All right, here we go. Got your camera out. You'll want to look out the left side once he rotates all and see all the planes. Red and white RV, runway 27, clear for takeoff. White RV, runway 27, left side, line of weight. Castle on 8, Papa Charlie, right side, runway 27, line of weight on the right side. Right, Papa Charlie, right side of the runway, line of weight. Silver RV, or white RV rather, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Tilt center. Roger. All right, we'll do 270 and 1,300 feet until we clear the Delta. Our, our, our assistant camera woman is back there building. 300 feet, clear the class Delta. Nare, Papa Charlie, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Detail Bonanza, runway 27, line of weight. There's the hill, there's our parking okay. space. There goes uh, our cooler. cooler. <laughs> okay, got it, Torian. There goes Oshkosh. It's like the Super Bowl of aviation, the World Cup of aviation. Every pilot needs to attend at least once. So, with this being my first time at Oshkosh, I didn't really know 100% what to expect. Getting up in the morning, getting woken up by D6 for this morning, it was 51. Yeah, coming overhead. I think it's just about inspiring people to get involved with different facets all across the industry and showing how much is out there. But really, Oshkosh is all about the people's need. Now I go back to watch you. It's all about the people, in my opinion. You come to the plane and you stay for the people. It's all about the people. People. Everyone's just been saying, like, it's all about the people. It's been about who I've been experiencing it with.